this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline. And today we're going to talk about the temporal lobe and a couple other interior changes in the brain. So first of all, the temporal lobe. Now, I've already discussed how I do not remember these divisions being so clearly delineated in the brain. Originally, it was just two halves of the brain, kind of next to each other, lying down the middle. So the temporal lobe temporal lobe for me was just a region of the brain that was in right around there. It did not actually form a lobe. And in fact, when I was learning about this stuff, uh, I thought it was weird that they called it a temporal lobe because there was just kind of a, a section and there was no demarcations. And so it was kind of hard to remember because you just kind of had to remember it was somewhere around there was the temporal lobe. And I'm like, well, who comes up with these names? Well, now it really is a lobe, which kind of freaks me out. I mean, did, did it get that name because somehow it was known that sometime it would become a lobe, or did it become a lobe because it got that name? you got to wonder about how history works and time when you have issues like this. So anyways, it's, it's a sticking out flap of material now, which is totally new for me. I Actually, I think I saw it maybe a year year or two ago, well, maybe at least a year ago, I saw it, that it was sticking out flat, but it wasn't sticking out as far as it's sticking out now. Okay, so it's, the morphology has definitely changed. Let's look at what the temporal lobe does. It, it's involved with auditory processing, visual processing, language re recognition. It's really heavily involved in language processing in general. If you have damage there, you can have some severe deficits in language if, if you have it down in the right place. It's also heavily involved in uh, long-term memory um, processing and, and holding of the memories. So um, one area that I was, I was very much interested in myself was uh, facial recognition. It's something that I have kept a sharp eye on over the many years, ever since maybe the 90s I've been watching in language or the um, visual processing regions of the temporal lobe. So this particular area, I kind of know a little better than some of the others. You can see this moving image here. I'm not sure if I can get that any bigger. Um, this is interesting because again, you see it's kind of on the outside. In the inside, there is no temporal lobe. Um, there's a lot of weird and interesting things going on on the inside of the brain, right in there. Um, that's the, that's the part that really kind of freaks me out, is that region inside. But anyway, right now we're on the temporal lobe. Okay. One reason of the temporal lobe that very much interested me was the fusiform gyrus. And that region used to be right in here in the middle of the temporal lobe. So it would be like right around there. And the temporal lobe was just a section of the brain. So it was just sort of kind of in the middle lower region of the brain was the fusiform gyrus. So imagine my surprise over the last year as I've seen this thing kind of drop down and spread out. I mean, it used to be just maybe half this size. It had a slight curve to it, um, it but it was just a region. And I always assume they called it a fusiform gyrus because it had a kind of a ridge or curve shape to it. Uh, it was not an actual physical ridge in the brain. It was just a region. But it's about twice as long now, and it's migrated all the way down here towards the bottom. Um, and it is an actual ridge in the brain now. There's an actual, like, uh, lump there, or like an intestinal blob. Again, it looks like intestines in here, more and more um, specific morphology that it has. So you can, you can point at it now. You'd be able to just go, it's right there and you could, you could outline it. So that's really weird for me. Um, it was always called the fusiform gyrus. Uh, even, even six months ago, it was the fusiform gyrus, but apparently now they're calling it also the medial temporal occipital gyrus. Um, part of the reason might be now that it, it stretches all the way back into the occipital lobe now. So it, did, it used to be just in the temporal lobe, but now it's it's spread out. And this one just, well, it freaks me out, but not as much as some of the other stuff. Okay, so here it is again, the fusiform gyrus. So I'm looking at this, and this whole thing, this is kind of the center part of the brain here. This whole thing 
I want to just say it's totally ridiculous. I mean, I've never heard of most of this stuff, um, with ex a few exceptions. I wonder if maybe they were some small, lesser-known parts of the brain that have migrated down along with the fusiform gyrus to become a, a bigger part. But I, I'm just not sure. I don't. I don't remember these. But you know, I kind of really knew the fusiform gyrus, so that's why I, I recognize it now down here. Um, I knew the corpus callosum. I'll go into that. I never heard of most of this stuff. This is where it gets really weird. This is down inside the brain here. Let's see. Uh, you can kind of see it. It's it's this region here that I'm looking at now, the inside. This is a cross section of the brain. So you can see here's the frontal lobe and other parts here. Um, this is why I said the frontal lobe looks bigger, but it might not be because this whole center part now is something else. It's the, the cingulate gyrus. Now, I've been hearing that for a while, the cingulate gyrus. Um, I think that that was another part of the brain originally, but again, I, I think it might have been just like a really small part. I mean, you know, it, it's huge. Uh, corpus callosum, I can go into that for a while. Uh, fornix, never heard of that. Um, a lot of this stuff is freaking me out. Anyway, so back to the original. Here's the fusiform gyrus. Now, I never heard of this inferior temporal gyrus. Hippocampus gyrus. I'm, I'm pretty sure there was no inferior temporal gyrus. I think that's just 100% new. Some of this stuff over here, I, I'm just not sure, but that one I'm pretty sure wasn't there. I mean, there was just fusiform gyrus. There was no other related part. Um, okay, so what does this inferior temporal gyrus do? All right. Inferior temporal gyrus. Function, receiving information. Um, object recognition. See, this a lot of this just sounds like the fusiform gyrus, so it's like an offshoot of that almost. Um, object recognition, that's fusiform gyrus. Um, here's an interesting one. They're talking about prosopagnosia. That's facial recognition again. All right, facial recognition is in the fusiform gyrus. It even says that up here, there was more facial and body recognition than, than objects. That's fusiform gyrus, fusiform face area. Uh, that's what I'm very familiar with here, the fusiform gyrus, the fusiform face area. Now, when they're, they're talking about here with the, uh, what the heck they call this thing again, the inferior temporal gyrus, um, they're going into the facial recognition again. So they have a big story here, and that's, and then they say, oh, well, that was from the right, uh, that was lesion in the right fusiform gyrus, like I remember. Then they have a whole other story here, and it also sounds like another similar injury, and they just basically, they're describing facial recognition issues again, which I would immediately say, oh, that's the fusiform gyrus. Um, but then they're saying at the end, non-invasive brain imaging revealed that LH is prosopagnosia, which is facial recognition problems was a result of damage to the right temporal lobe, which contains the inferior temporal gyrus. Well, so what? I mean, the right temporal lobe contains a whole bunch of stuff, and prosopagnosia was always known to be uh, caused by the, uh, by the fusiform gyrus. So why is it that they're, why is there a big write-up on this when we're not on the fusiform gyrus? We're talking about the inferior temporal gyrus. So... I don't know, I, I'm wondering if this is an ME in progress. I, I don't remember this inferior temporal gyrus. Um, it looks like it, they're kind of trying to talk about fusiform gyrus stuff and imply that it might be related to inferior temporal gyrus, even though it's, with this information, it, there's no reason to suspect that. So this whole thing is just, I don't know. There's a big, no, it doesn't really show you, but you can see that it's now all, way down here on the bottom of the brain, the fusiform gyrus. No, that's the inferior temporal gyrus. But I don't know, the whole, that whole thing freaks me out because I know for sure that was up higher in the middle of the brain. Um, that one has completely changed. Uh, if they're changing the name now, I, I don't know how long the fusiform gyrus is going to hold out. Um, oh, another thing that was weird. Let's see if I can find that again. Inferior temporal gyrus. You know what? I forgot my train of thought, so I guess I'll have to skip that one. 
Okay, so there's kind of a cross section of the whole thing. This region here is the part you really got to keep your eye on. This is the part that's really changing. This is the part you see from the outside up here. That, and this is the old school brain that I remember. Uh, what's changing is this part on the inside. As usual, it's the sneaky parts you don't see that are changing. And they're changing quickly. In fact, I was started researching this last week more. And some of the images I had on my computer are gone now. And, and the new ones that I replaced them with. This region in the center is getting bigger and bigger. So there's where it's going on. All right. One other thing that I also saw when I was uh, kind of looking through this is the, the layers of the brain. Um, there's looks like there's a couple new ones. Um, used to be you just have the brain, the dura and pia matter, bone and skin. That was it. Um, but now the um, you have this arachnoid matter, which is this layer right here. I've never heard of it. It's such a weird name to arachnoid matter. Um, Apparently that is there's an additional kind of a spongy area to the brain. I used to always think it was sort of weird that you just cut short way down and you're in the brain. But uh, apparently they've been adding some layers. This one just kind of describes it better. I, re I remember the pia matter, and then it was dura matter. Then there was bone, then there was skin. But um, this arachnoid layer it looks like an additional spongy labor, layer of protection and it this kind of cross hatched in like air space in here, so it would be very good for cushioning. Okay, and then here, this perosteum, never heard of that either. I mean, we had to memorize all the layers, so to, there, I mean, I, <laughs> there's just no way I didn't know about this one. Okay, so perosteum is a membrane that covers the outer surface of all bones, except at the joints of long bones. Endosteum lines the inner surface of the medullary cavity of all lung bones. Well, I, I didn't really study bones away from the brain that much, so I don't know about this endosteum. Uh, I also never heard of that, but I know there was no perosteum on the brain, so I'm pretty sure that that's another new one, but there's probably new stuff everywhere. I mean, you could just go crazy. So anyway, next time I'm going to try to get more into that center of the brain there cover what I can in here. There's there's a lot of new stuff, so I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to explain all of it, but there's some things that I didn't know before, and I know that they're different, a lot different than they were before. So um, for today, that's it, though. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Time Mom.